The last couple of years have been particularly hard on us. My father passed away due to complications from his Parkinson's disease, which is something he had been suffering for over 12 years. Minna's mother broke her hip and got a hip replacement a couple years ago, but she never really fully recovered from the surgery. Every time we see her, she seems to be deteriorating a little bit more. My mother has osteoporosis of her knees and her knee pains are getting worse year after year. And what hurts me most this year was when I found out that my brother, his name is Sam, Sam has been diagnosed with kidney failure and I have made multiple visits back home to support him, to take him through his tests and diagnosis and trying to change his lifestyle and habits to reverse some of his symptoms of his diabetes, his high blood pressure and to lose some weight because all these chronic diseases ultimately led to his kidney problems. So over the course of just two short years, the people that we care about the most, our parents, our family, we watch the health decline and it's so painful for us to see that they are not willing to change their eating habits or their lifestyle in order to alleviate some of their problems. Hi, I'm Andrew from The Foolish Couple. We believe that healthy relationships start with health and we help couples achieve total success in health and in relationships through nutrition, exercise, mindset, and lifestyle. So where am I going with all this? Some of you may have a similar problem that we have or know someone who is suffering from chronic diseases. You may feel frustrated and sad that the people that you care about the most simply don't want to help themselves to get better. It's like watching a drug addict that keeps going back to their drug habit because it's so much harder to quit. Let me ask you this. If you are one of these people who is suffering from diabetes, pre-diabetes, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, chronic pains, or whatever other autoimmune chronic degenerative diseases, why are you where you are today? Is it really because you're old? Is it really because you have bad genes? That it runs in the family? Or is it just because you refuse to give up drinking, smoking, or sugar? Or that you're just too lazy to get off your butt and do some exercise? Who do you think is suffering from your illnesses? For us, we thrive on mentoring and teaching couples how to have a more fulfilling relationship with each other and with their families. And when you are suffering, guess who also suffers with you? When you are in pain, when you have to go through chemo, dialysis, do you think your husband or wife is happy about it? Or do you think that they are just, you know, or do you think that they are just in as much pain as you are? And when your blood pressure or heart problem is preventing you from traveling the world, who is stuck staycationing with you? We have a friend that for many years, her father was bedridden and her and her mother took turns taking care of him. They cannot travel. They cannot even stay out for long. And I'm pretty sure our friend remains single partly because of this burden. Now I'm sure that our friend loved her father and so does her mother. But when her father finally passed away, I could just see that relief in their faces. It's like lifting a heavy weight off of their hearts. So, if you are one that has diabetes, dementia, joint pains, heart problems, high blood pressure, or whatever your health problem is, it's just not your problem alone. Why won't you make an effort to change your life so that you can change your loved one's lives as well? The excuse I hear all the time is, life is too short and I'm not willing to give up desserts or something else like that. Because what's the point of life then? Is your point in life really just to eat desserts? Or is it true that the dessert gives you short-term pleasure and causes you and people around you long-term pains? Well, let me share some personal observations I had over my last 48 years. Growing up, my parents never got along. They were always arguing and fighting over something really small or silly. 
never have they ever said I love you to each other or to show any other affection towards each other. And this went on throughout my life. For over 40 years, they have been fighting every day. One day, my father's Parkinson's eventually put him into a senior assisted home. And then, I saw my parents' relationship change. My mother visited him almost every day, and the conversations they had were about all the times that they shared together, the times when they were happy together. Something that I've never heard of for the past 40 years. Now, right before my father left us, his biggest, regret, his biggest regret was he did not show his love more for my mom or toward his children. On the contrary, Minna's grandfather had Alzheimer's for many years and eventually passed away in a senior assisted home also, just like my dad. But unlike my parents, her grandparents were very much in love throughout their lives. I remember vividly the year that Minna's grandfather passed away. Her grandmother pulled us aside and asked us, when are we going to get married? Because she wanted to see us tie the knot before she died. She caught us by surprise and we reassured her that she would see us get married because she was still in great health. But sadly, her grandmother passed away the following year on the day of her wedding anniversary. We suspect that she didn't want to live on without grandpa. To this day, it is one of my greatest regrets I was not able to fulfill her wish to see us getting married. Now, most of us accept life with the cards that were dealt to us. We want to accept the burden ourselves. We live our lives thinking only about ourselves, right? But do you ever ask yourself, who do you really live for? Whose lives are you affecting or changing in your current state of health? Maybe it's your spouse, your parents, your children, or even your grandchildren. We should stop living for ourselves and, has, and ask ourselves, who do you live for? Once you figure that out, you will understand why you should get healthier rather than accepting your fate. We are being selfish when we don't do the best we can do to live a healthier lifestyle for our families. You think you're the one suffering, but it's actually your spouse, your kids, your parents and friends that suffer the most watching you deteriorate. My parents fought all my life, but I'm sure they were in love at some point before I was born. I witnessed that love in the last seven years of my dad's life. It was too little, too late. I saw the love that Minna's grandparents shared with each other all the way to the passing. I see the love Minna's parents share with each other and her mother's deteriorating health worries us each time we see them. We believe a happy and loving relationship starts with your health, living a thriving life together. So, let me ask you the question again. Why are you where you are in your health? Do you not care about your loved ones? Change starts with you. And you need to know why you need to change for the loved ones for the ones that you love. What one step can you do today to improve your health? Not for yourself, but for your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, or for your parents. Think about that. Until next time, live what you love and love what you live.